everyone. We like to welcome you to come, Lord Jesus. This afternoon, people have literally come from the four corners of the earth. So we'd like to welcome our guests from Italy, from the United States of America, from Malawi and Africa, and even from India. It's a bit difficult to describe exactly what Come Lord Jesus is. And you know, even we aren't completely sure what's going to happen here today. We know we've come to worship God. And we want you to join with us as we sing and pray. We've also come with a message, some good news God wants you to hear. And we've come believing, believing that God himself is going to be here today and that he is going to move amongst us by the power of his Holy Spirit. And so maybe the best thing that we could do at the outset of our time together is simply to pray. To pray. Come, Lord Jesus. Come and be present with us. Bring to us the word of your Father in the power of the Spirit. Come, Lord Jesus. And as we worship you, as we raise you up with our praise, come today in this place and take your place in our midst. <clears throat>
into a battle. It's not just a physical battle for things we can touch and see, but it's a battle for the hearts and minds of men that involves invisible powers and forces. It's a battle between two spiritual kingdoms, a kingdom of light and a kingdom of darkness, between two spiritual rulers, Almighty God, the creator of the world, and a fallen creature called Satan. on the earth. That is to steal, to kill, and to destroy anything that bears the image of God. He will use the foulest of means to achieve this wicked end. He knows nothing of mercy or justice or truth. He will welcome you in and then poison your drink. He will bid you farewell and then stab you in the back. He will do all in his power to bring hell on earth and drag earth to hell. For the kingdom of this world it shall become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and Catholic or a Protestant, rich or poor, young or old, he ensnares all men by their proud independence and their selfish desires. It may be pride in your country, your class, or your creed, or maybe just greed for money or sex or power. But by deceiving you into making these things your gods, he will have caught you. And having caught you, he will utterly destroy you. For the kingdom of this world, it shall become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and evermore.
that the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. All men can now be saved. You can be set free from everything that Satan would use to enslave you. From that sense of hopelessness or loneliness, from those feelings of anger or frustration, maybe from that addiction that you wrestle with, from your guilts, from your fears. In fact, you can be delivered from all your weaknesses and your sins. The salvation of God has appeared to all men because Jesus Christ has appeared to all men. He is the one who has crushed the serpent's head. He is the Savior of the world. He is the Son of God. And Scripture says that if the Son sets you free, then you shall be free indeed. How has He done it? How has He rescued us out of the clutches of Satan? Well, it was far from easy. In fact, as we see from this next song, it cost Jesus everything.
Imagine it. Jesus Christ, the majestic, the all-powerful Son of God, as a squealing, squirming, helpless little baby. And yet, in humble obedience, Jesus became a man, lived on this earth, and then in complete submission to his Father, endured the suffering of the cross. On the cross, he took upon himself the sin of the whole world. And because he did, he was torn apart, not just in his body, but torn apart from his Father, with whom he had been one from all eternity. But it was in this very act, this ultimate expression of love for Father and for His creation, that He crushed the serpent's head. And so He made it possible for us to find freedom, to find freedom from everything that would ensnare us in this life, to find freedom even from death itself. And that is why God, having seen such humility, such obedience, such love in raising His Son Jesus from the dead, has exalted Him and has set Him in the very highest place of power and of authority.
at the center of this universe, there is a throne. It is the throne of God. It is the throne from which we should all have been condemned to death. But at the center of that throne, there is now a man. The man, Jesus Christ. He is the Lamb of God. The one who has absorbed in his body on the cross the punishment that we deserve for our sins. And so that throne of judgment has now also become for us a throne of grace. Even now as we meet here, all the hosts of heaven worship before him, worship the one who died so that we might live. As we now join together with the worship of heaven, let's expect the Holy Spirit to come and to open the eyes of our hearts so that we too might behold, behold, behold the Lamb. Jesus Christ, we worship you today. We worship you as the one who has died for our salvation. We worship you as the one who has been raised up to the highest place of honor. We worship you as the one who even now is seated at the right hand of God the Father.
the Hebrews says, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has gone through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. When Jesus ascended to heaven, in passing through the heavens, it's as if he created a passageway or a corridor, just like the one that was formed here earlier. <coughs> it's a corridor between heaven and earth, a corridor through which we can now approach God's throne and receive mercy so that God no longer deals with us according to our sins. But it's also a corridor through which Jesus himself can come to bring grace to help us in our time of need. In Psalm 22, a poor man cries to God, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me? Has that ever been your experience? Maybe that's your experience now. You feel God is far from you. And you know you need help. Well, the next verse holds a key. Yet you are enthroned on the praises of your people. Although Jesus Christ is now seated as king mm. in heaven, Scripture says that when we praise him, when we join our worship with that of all the saints and angels, we are coming in line with the reality of heaven. And it's as if this completes that corridor between heaven and earth so that Jesus, by his Spirit, can then come amongst us. The psalmist goes on to say, In you our fathers put their trust. They trusted, and you delivered them. They cried to you, and were saved. In you they trusted, and were not disappointed. And God doesn't want to disappoint anyone here this afternoon. But it's as we express our confidence and our trust in God through our praise that Jesus can come down this corridor, that he can come by his Spirit and take his place right here and now as Lord in our midst, as the Lord who has defeated all your enemies, as the Lord who can set you free and make you whole. The Lord is here this afternoon. Already I've been sensing his presence with us. Now as we sing this next song, I'd like to encourage you to reach out in faith and to expect the Lord to come and to meet you at your point of need. Let's maybe stand and worship the Lord together as we sing the song, Lord Jesus, we enthrone you. says, I spread out my hands to you. My soul thirsts for you like a parched land. As we sing this song again, let's stretch out our hands to the Lord 
to express our desire for him to come and to meet with us now. the band keep on playing some of the choir are now going to move down among you to be available to pray with you you can continue to either stand or sit let's just keep our focus on the Lord as we go on worshipping him as the Lord in our midst Jesus has been meeting with us by his spirit but Jesus is coming back again in person scripture says that all the nations will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of the sky with great power and glory 2,000 years ago John the Baptist appeared as a prophet from God he described himself as a voice calling people to prepare for the coming of the Lord. In these days, many believe that God is looking for a generation who will come together to be a people who will herald the Lord's return, who will come together to be that one voice that prepares the way for the Lord.
us up with our praise. We are in fact not only preparing the way for his coming amongst us now by his spirit, but we're preparing the way for his coming again at the close of this age. The Bible says that before Jesus returns, the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. And so by proclaiming to all men what God has done through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we are also fulfilling a condition for the Lord's return. We'd like you to join us in doing that now in this next song. Up till now, most of the action's been up here. Now we want to get you a bit more involved. The course that we want you to learn has got two parts, a man's part and a woman's part. The man's part's very simple. That's no reflection on the man's ability. But listen to me while I sing the man's part of sing a new song to the Lord. Sing a new song to the Lord. That's all you have to do. Sing a new song to the Lord. Try with me. Sing a new song to the Lord. Just the men now. Sing a new song to the Lord. Once more. Sing a new song to the Lord. That's good. And now the ladies, I want you to listen to Carol as I sing the man's part. Sing a new song to the Lord. Oh, sing unto the Lord a sing new song. Sing a new song to the Lord. Sing to the Lord all the sing earth. Sing a new song to the Lord. Sing to the Lord and bless His sing name. Sing a new song to the Lord. Tell of His Right, now ladies, you try it too with the men singing their part. Here we go. Sing a new song to the Lord. Oh, sing unto the Lord a sing new song. A new song to You're doing very well. This song is taken from Psalm 96. There the psalmist says, Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the seas roar and all that fills them. Let the field exult and everything in it then shall all the trees of the wood sing for joy before the Lord. For he comes, for he comes to judge the earth. Let's sing a new song to the Lord. Sing a new song to the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song. a new song to the Lord.
continue to play this melody, I want to encourage you to use your own words to praise the Lord in a new song. It can be very simple, but let it be your own expression. Praise to the Lord. 